Super Ego, Season 4. Profiles and Self-Obsession. Brought to you by Drs. Jeremy Carter, Matt Gorley, Mark McConville, and Paul F. Tompkins. You can learn more at GoSuperEgo.com, Facebook, and Twitter.com slash GoSuperEgo. Purchase previous seasons, bonus content, and live episodes at GoSuperEgo.com. Case study. Shunt McGuppin with Nico Case. Antisocial Personality Disorder. Okay, Shunt McGuppin, meet Nico Case. Uh, today's session is the duets album, and uh, I hope this goes well. Okay, you gotta forgive me, I'm just a little flustered because I wanted to do this more than anything. Well, Sugar, I am so glad. And you know what is awaiting us is a jacuzzi and a small Swiss man who's gonna give us a Thai massage. I just, I feel so carried away. You're gonna be, because I have, uh, you know those old people elevator things that go upstairs? I've got one, only it's like a merry-go-round horse. Wow. Do you want me to leave? No, and I fact, think it's safer with witnesses, quite frankly. And we'll give you the safe word. What is it? You'll just know by the look in my eyes. I don't understand. If I look bored, that's my safe word. Wait, so you don't even worry about if you're in danger, it's just if you're no. not having a good time. Oh. No. All right. I'm looking for an ambivalent kind of sexy father figure, so well, I was... that's the first song I want to do, ambivalent sexy father figure. Stay with me, boys, Kid D. Here we go. No, hold on, Chant, we're not do even... Do you have no. yourself some daddy needs? Put your arm around my waist And feel the breeze Okay, stop for a second. Um, we're already starting off a little too suggestively. What do you mean by breeze exactly? I just meant, at this point, my crotch emits a... Okay, what? <laughs> well, you this, you this album has to sell in Walmarts. We have to keep it family friendly. Are we doing a children's album? No, it's just... Can we? I'm sorry, sometimes Shunt gets a little sidetracked. It's okay. I, I could start this one if, if you prefer. That would be fantastic. Okay, let's take it off, Nico. Do it in D, and here we go. With your middle-aged hand on my waist, I feel a comfort I ain't no. Yeah, good. And with your youthful bosom heaving up against me, I feel like Sylvester Stallone. What, what does that mean? I want to give you money, but you will not take it. Makes me feel a little like a sex worker, but not the trafficked kind. We already know we can't There's use that. There's a difference according to the law and the FBI. Untrafficked sex worker was filmed before a live studio audience. Look, sex trafficking is a heavy theme, and again, yeah, people... Yeah, but people do it. I say legalize it. No. No. Yeah, I mean, yes, but no. What? Are we talking about marijuana? You know what, let's just move on to Marijuana them. smuggled inside of a young woman's hatch. Ah, uh, okay. It's not ethical at all. Uh, it's effective, yet it is not ethical. Here's a song that it's I think It's effective, would... but not ethical. <laughs> if you hide it in your hatch. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Boom, waka, swoon, suck a What's the matter? I had a feeling that rhyme was coming first of all, so that was both vulgar and predictable. That is country music, though. If you know what the next word's going to be before you ever hear it, it's going to be a hit. Okay, you know what? We, we were only able to book five minutes of studio time anyway because your budget is so low, I'm having so... some trouble with some chords. Do you think we could go somewhere and maybe you could help me? Yeah, yeah. Are you even listening maybe to me? Maybe you could curl my hand into a fist that makes like a G sharp. Or an F chord. Hello? I think I'd be better and more limber if you were perhaps breathing on my nape. While you crushed my little hand into an F orgy. Did you say an F orgy? Can we do something that is a little bit more palatable for the general public? I have something here on the list called Red Roses and White Wine. Menopausal Passion? No. Uh, Ben, let's do this in C. Here we go. Red Roses and White Wine I'm gonna have me a real adult time Some Sandra Bullock in my movie Hot flashes over beef stew Red roses and white wine Let's have us an adult time Okay, okay. <laughs> that was clean, but that was just weird. Um, I'm gonna give you one that you can't screw up. It's called Blessed Be the Christ Child. The music's at your feet. Keep it clean. Show me on the Lord 
where she touched you. Oh, come on! Jesus wore a tiny wrap round his gym who That's not on the lyric sheet. Made of terry cloth just like Sean Connery. Oh, God. Jesus wouldn't touch you cause he's got an ouchie in his palm. Okay, man, you can stop. He doesn't have a mommy to dab it with mercurochrome. Okay, just stop. It's illegal now anyway. Cut. Not like in the Roman days Or in the seven days Adventist church What? Is there a problem? Uh, okay, you know what? That was actually very beautiful uh, It's a song about pedophilia uh, Yeah, unusable, you didn't let me finish, but beautiful Sometimes the spirit just takes you yeah. I mean, basically I'm astride the muse 24-7 Is there anywhere the, the muse takes you that's cleaner? Let me show you how big my stink is in my Chrysler set top No, that's not it It's a V16 There's no such thing I'm gonna tie your wrists together with a time and chain I'm out of here Shunt and Nico was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Case study, Pamela Mills Portrait Studios. Schizoid Personality Disorder. Hi, come on in. Hi. Hi. You all look so nice. This is going to be a wonderful family portrait for y'all. Thank you. This is my son. Hi. Don't you look handsome? And my daughter. I'm CJ. Hi, CJ. You look beautiful today. Thank you. Are you a sir or a madam? Well, I'm a woman. Okay. It's hot in here. It's all the light. Well, it's all the light. That's right. Yeah. Mom's oh. right. <laughs> Actually, I should say, I'm their aunt. Their mom, uh, she, uh, well, they don't know, but she died. What? Well, they think she just left, but she died. Well, that's none of my business. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. If y'all smush together. Cedric, don't. You. Girls. I'm a boy. Well, my braces are heating up. Well, that's not the lights. I don't know what that would be. He has tooth warming. If some people get gingivitis, and my teeth heat up. Okay, well, are we in danger? Or? No, I might be. He I is mean... a natural occurrence of photovoltaic cells in his enamel. It's part of why his mother took off. Trust me, it's like fibromyalgia. It's not real. Speaking of words that start with photo, let's take a photograph. It's fibromyalgia, not photomyalgia. Okay. Can we put your aunt in the center? You can call me Lord. This. We'll put Aunt Lourdes in the center. Okay. See Trick will put you right here. Hey. Um, CJ will put you on the other side of Aunt Lourdes. Yeah. Look at that. That looks great. And I'll just take a few. All right, like that. Ah. Here's what you want to do. Oh, okay. Sorry. What's the matter? Is it the flash? I was just smiling. Do you know that you make a noise when you smile? What? Yeah, you make like a sort of haunted house noise. She also has a sort of ossified lip problem where it can calcify in an inch. Shut inch. up. It, anyway. My aunt is a scientist. Oh, is that right? What, what kind of science do you do? Church science, mostly. I heard this new report that the earth might be 2,000 years old? Yeah, we're trying to get it down to a thousand. Good luck with y'all. I'll be praying for you. Thanks, honey. Can I bring my gerbil Arthur out of my pocket? Oh, you probably should because it's hot in here and he's a living creature. Yeah. Oh, not anymore. I spoke too soon. Arthur. Okay, put him in the trash can over there. I want to give him a proper burial. It's a Christian trash can. Oh, so speaking of Christian, I should let you know that we're taking this photo from my Christian Tingles profile. Where oh, I think it's called Christian Mingle, right? Not after 11 p.m. Oh, I've never been on the internet that late. Well, who does? Only sinners. I'm strictly 9 p.m. and out. <laughs> Log off. So I'm hoping to meet a nice man, yeah. and I'd like to get them hooked up with some nice men as well. I'm a boy. Oh, right. I'm a lesbian. And so was your mother. She was? She's not dead. She ran off with another woman. Oh, I see. She's dead to us is what we mean to say. Right. Okay, well then, here's what I want you to do. If y'all two would look up at your Aunt Lourdes, like adoringly, like, oh my gosh, we're so lucky to be living with her. What's so great about living in a Ford F-150 with your aunt? Well, it's a good American car. And for the record, it's a king cat. Fit for a king. Fit for a king of kings. Oh, our Lord Jesus Christ. And a lordess of lordesses like you. Snap! I gotcha. Oh. Hey, why don't y'all put on these feather boas and gangster hats? Oh, that sounds fun. We'll do a dress up. Uh, if you want to call it that. I'll be like a gangster's mall. And CJ, you can be an old timey flapper. Fine. And Cedric, you could just be a dead woman. Do I get to wear a dress? No, but look, I got a plastic puddle of blood. Slip it under your head so it looks like your skull got stove in. My teeth are burning. I, I can smell them, actually. It's a fake disease. Not like the ossified lip. That's a real thing? Yeah. Okay, change of pace. Everyone put on these firemen helmets. 
I love this. Three women firemen. Oh, my boy. No one believes it. Hurry up. I have a date with the most popular boy in school tonight, Barley Skywalker. Could we do a thing where it's like Artie? Who's Artie? No, like artsy. Like, or the two of them are turned around and it's just me, or they leave the frame. And you could do like a frosted shot of me or like a glamour shot, but instead of putting Vaseline on the lens, you just put it on my face. Yeah, I'll smear Vaseline all over your face. Can we go faster? Barley and I are going down to Fuck Beach later. <laughs> <laughs> Case study, Ian Fleming, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. The International Broadcasting Corporation presents Reflections. Good evening, welcome to Reflections. This segment is entitled Behind the Words. I'm Clunz Nibletouch. Joining me this evening is British author and spy novelist and Second War veteran Ian Fleming. My name is Iron Fleming, don't you see? Exquisite. I understand that most of the things you experienced in the Second World War were often the inspiration for your novels. When I was in WWII going up against old Addie Hitler with my team of Red Indian commandos, is what I called them, we would scale any mountain, climb any valley, thwart any riverboat, African queen, and boy had we met some of those. Some of their haunches spread so wide you could drive 12 troops in a Vickers tank up there. Could you tell me a little about your experience when you wrote your first spy novel? Yes, I was on my honeymoon, avoiding any sort of wetness with my new bride. We were taking up residence at my Jamie Aiken estate called Goldeneye. What is your opinion of the movies that have been created from your novel? Well, I've only seen the first two because I died during Goldfinger, don't you know? But back to my honeymoon. We would wake every morning and I would go swimming in the ocean. The doctor's wind would blow in and the undertaker's wind would blow out. I would spear fish and octopi, put it on a pike to remind the natives that I was the dominant male, spray the white sand beaches with my colonial musk, then I would join in four minutes of reluctant coitus with my wife. I would use the rest of the day typing on my golden typewriter, plugging out the words that would become Casino Royal, don't you see? I understand that much of your time spent in Jamaica was the best time of your life. Do you ever enjoy going back to England? You know, there are good things about it. For instance, bricks. Your wife, uh, she... Oh, you mean Hadrian's Wall? ...is uh, not often seen at your side. You see, I'm not an effeminate man, but I do believe I was strong-armed into marriage. Because she had told me, if you want to marry me, I must leave my husband. And I said, don't do that, and she did. And then, somehow, we were to be married. I think it was because I wanted to please my mother, because I never could, physically. So your wife left her husband? No, she brought him with, you see, and we had quite honeymooning, waking up mornings, the three of us, in a one-and-a-half-person bed. You know, in Jamaica, they don't do two-person beds because even when you're married, it's a sin. I understand they're highly religious. We would take mosquito nets and place them between the three of us like so many bundling boards. That way, we were not able to make any sort of, how shall I call it, the lavender leap, the Cook's Island smelly, the snorkeling through the mangrove swamps, as they called it. My wife was very musty. Were you friendly toward the Negroes? No, because you know why would I be? A lot of people have found a sort of homophobia and racism running rampant through my novellas, you know? But I look back at my own literary collection. I own first edition copies of On the Origin of the Species by old Charlie Darwin. And my favorite, a first edition copy of Scouting for Boys. Do you have any others that are prized possessions? Yes. I've got The Stench of Lucretia by Helgut Mardred. I've got Eleanor of Aquitaine and her friendly sack of pain. You know that book? Have you read it? I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, advanced copy. No idea what you mean. And finally, the Bible. You know the one written by Jesus? Actually, not a word. <laughs> You've been listening to Reflections. I'm your host, Lyle Middletitch. My name is never the same. And my name is Iron Fleming, don't you see? I wrote all the Jams Bond novels that I wrote. Thank you for listening. Our program is brought to you by Toothwax. Case study, The Boys from Cell Block C. 
Borderline Personality Disorder. All right, everybody, lights out. Guard, guard, excuse me. First time, long time. Listen, I'm totally okay with turning the lights off now. I'm just wondering, can we leave them off a little while? Because I'd like a little sleep in. But I'm with that guy or lady. No, that's not how it works. Yeah, I want breakfast in bed. Guys, I need you to cooperate. Lights out. Officer. Yo. How am I supposed to do this tell if you're a lady by mail examination in the pitch dark? Uh, I have an answer. Do it tomorrow, Cleavon. I need to know by midnight or I might be executed. What? Why? If I'm a lady, there's no way I did this because they found so much semen at the crime scene. Okay, I have children at home. I've got children in here. No, all right. I've got grown-ups in here. I've got grown-ups too in here. We're doing a movie night. I've got your children in here. Okay. Lights out. Lights out. Guard, guard, guard. Yes, David. Door's locked. Yeah. Well, how am I supposed to get out? You're not. Okay. Maybe I don't get what's happening. Did your attorney explain to you? I most certainly did. Hi, Bill Bryerson, attorney at law, who's also in jail. And he explained that because the two of you did what you did. We murdered our wife. I did explain it wrong, I think. My clients actually should not be speaking at this point. Please direct your questions to me. I'd appreciate that. I'm in this cell over here. Thank you. Lights out, gentlemen, please. Well, guard, 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 guard. Can I have a second? It's Friday night, so we're actually doing unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks in here for another hour. So I need to keep these lights on because I got like six four tops. No, you can't serve food in here. I'll be right back with some more iced tea. Look, Colton, your cell for the umpteenth time is not an olive garden. Well, six dozen of one, half a dozen of the other. You got it backwards. We'll close at 1030. Thank you. Hey, screw. It's, uh... Hey, screw. It's Officer Davidson. Leo Luscovar here, the first grade strangler. Tell me a ghost story. You're in prison. How scared do you Ooh, need to be? Oh, there, that's a good one. You killed people. Oh, did I? Yes, you did. I don't think so. Oh, no? But if I did, I bet I wasn't with this stainless steel hook. That's an old urban... Hey, screw. It's Gordon. Candyman. Uh... Candyman. What are you doing? Candyman. How many... Candyman. Okay. Omora, and he's coming. <laughs> he's not. Uh -huh. There's no such Candyman. thing. Candyman. Who can make the sunshine? Bring a taco every day. Lights out. With the lights out, I can't see what I'm doing behind my Rita Hayworth poster. Oops. For the last time, you idiots, turn off the damn lights. Guard? What? I'm blind. I don't know if it's on or off. Oh, God. I'll do a click and you tell me yes or no. Ready? Where's the switch? Okay. I'll just. Hold on. Tell me, warm or cold? Ready? Cold. I haven't even moved. I know. Oh, I see. Where I'm starting is cold. Yeah. So I should move to somewhere? Yes. Okay, here I go. You're still not moving. Well, moving is a state of being. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, here I go. Don't do that. One step forward, a two step back. Cold. Three to the side. Warm. Don't give me no flack. I'm a blind eye witness doing time for perjury. Are you done? Oh, sorry. I was reminded of a better time. Okay, here I go. Ready? Yeah. Click. Now, I said that with my mouth, so there will be tricks. All right, I've had it. I want all lights out right now. Why do you let us control the lights? Now, I said. Hey, yo, God. My light's been off since the moment you asked. Do I get a little extra gravy on these mashed potatoes or what? Why do you have mashed potatoes in your cell? Because they ain't served no mashed potatoes at the Olive Garden like I asked them to, so I gotta get it at the cafe. Cafeteria. I'll have what he's have. Wait a minute, Creepy Jim, please turn your lights back off. All right, but you know what I'm doing in here? I don't. Something creepy. Lights out, God damn it! What if I've got a light in my soul that just shines really bright? It can't be anything with light. What if I got a tub of crystal light? Okay, great. And I do. What if I got Crystal Bernard in here? And he does. And we're watching Wings together. You're not, and you don't. Well, what a fun game of what if that was. Good night. Okay, everybody, he turned off his light. Guard, what time is it? 9 a.m. Lights on, everyone. Case study, God's Crazy Monsters, Antisocial Personality Disorder. Happy Independence Day! Hey, you your loved ones. God's Crazy Monsters! 
this is an exciting night. It shows you that the United States of America is exactly... 238 years old. That's right. 100 years older than the Earth itself. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying 100 is... years after the Lord came down, he put his finger at the Earth and he said, Let man and dinosaur feed and help each other, creating machinery none of us has ever seen, like Dinotopia, the most accurate miniseries ever made. I'm T-Rex Jesus. Try nailing these arms to a cross. The greatest omnivore who has ever lived, and he was friends with this gentleman. I'm the Reverend Leroy Jenkins, and you ain't gonna find bathrooms to make love a uh, caca in anywhere else. And for sex. I think you catch my weaning. And my meaning. God's crazy monster slathers you in dove shit. <laughs> Located next to the Sunoco, we're not in the Sunoco, not affiliated with Sunoco, don't ask to park at Sunoco, do not ask to use their air or their water. Hi, I'm Janelle from Sunoco. Come on down here where absolutely God's crazy monsters is. There, there's just no question. I'd like to clarify we are no longer at war with the Sunoco. Corporation. Not true. We are now in a cold war with the Sunoco Corporation. Oh no, God's crazy monsters! I'm Robert Sunoco. I'm a religious man and I'm scared of dinosaurs. I can't wait to take my whole family down to see God's crazy monsters. Stop by a Sunoco, then buy a bunch of microwavable cheeseburgers, some dinosaur statues, and a Jesus rod. Keep it going! Hi, I'm TV's Tim Gunn from America's Runway or something. I've got a new show called The Fashion of the Christ. Come on down to God's monsters who are a little more sane than you think. I'm Tim Gunn, TV's Ted Danson. More commercial, please! When you feel like your car doesn't have the Orinoco flow, take it to Sunoco. Sunoco, not affiliated with God's crazy monsters, but now at a peaceful standout. I'm literally standing in the middle of the museum. This is Janelle again. I don't know how to be any clearer. We share a wall. In that we share four walls, because we're in the same goddamn room. Hey, it's Hi, this is Chris Angel. Way to see my latest mind freak. I'm going to put a Christian lizard museum inside of Sunoco. Goddamn Chris Angel done gone, done gone, done gone. Put us in a tiny snow globe into Sunoco. This was all part of Chris Angel's plan, which begs the question, were we always all part of a long con that Chris Angel's pulling on the world? Was the greatest trick the devil ever played? Convincing us he wasn't Chris Angel. Crazy Monster Museum, you get on 65 freeway in Indianapolis. You will pass the Sunoco, then you'll realize you were always in the Sunoco. It's the shining, you've never left. You've always been a part of God's Crazy Monsters Museum. Inside said snow globe, inside said Sunoco. Do not park in the driveway, do not use their air or water. You start to question reality, you start to realize, oh my God, I'm in an next Chris Angel special. Hi, Janelle from Sunoco, where we sell snow globes with Janelle from Sunoco. Janelle from Sunoco, Janelle from Sunoco. Super Ego is improvised, analyzed, and brought to you by doctors Matt Gorley, Jeremy Carter, Mark McConville, and Paul F. Tompkins. With special guests, Nico Case as Nico Case, Colin Hanks as the boys from Cell Block C inmates Mickey Lubbard and Rudolfo Mandolfo. Timothy Amundsen as the boys from Cell Block C inmate Gruff Belkins. Michael Sherman as the boys from Cell Block C inmate Glenn Stutz Esquire. And Thomas Lennon as the God's Crazy Monsters Museum founder Al Pantifico. Musical specialist James Jimmy Blades Bladen, who retro arranged all of the Shark McGuffin Nico Case music after the improvised fact. Guitars by Mutt Taylor and pedal steel by Cubby Lauderboard. Super Ego theme by Alan Simpson. Super Ego opening theme by James Bladen. Website by visualaid.com. They're the best and the brightest. For any web needs, visit visualaid.com. Did you know that Super Ego is an enhanced podcast that you can watch as it plays? Did you also know that Super Ego is best experienced on over-the-ear headphones for optimum stereophonic brainscape immersion? Look, listen. 
Why, you never know what you might find. Visit GoSuperEgo.com to download past seasons and MP3 episodes. Visit GoSuperEgo.com slash specials for behind the bonus and second opinions episodes, as well as select Super Ego live shows. Visit GoSuperEgo.com slash merchandise to purchase Super Ego goods, as well as Shunt, Mutt, and the Journeyman's Firebrand Outlaw Country album, Mount Us More. Get a postcard from your favorite Super Ego case study. Visit GoSuperEgo.com forward slash postcard to find out how. And you can email us at GoSuperEgo at gmail.com. Mark your calendars. Super Ego will be performing at the Kansas City Improv Festival on September 12th and 13th and the LA Podcast Festival on September 27th. Check us out on recent episodes of Comedy Bang Bang and the Nerdist Podcast. Super Ego is brought to you whenever we are able to bring it to you by a generous grant from the Sofabet Foundation. I'm Robert Stack. That's right! You never would be celebrating Independence Day if it weren't for Thomas Jefferson and his wonderful Triceratops friend, Greg. My husband and I were out power walking near the Sunoco station, and we wandered on into this god's crazy monsters. Hi, I'm the husband. Um, a lot of people don't give me speaking roles on account of my cleft tongue. One side goes out my mouth, the other stays in to do a lick around.